A big challenge exists when you chat with your data using GPT models. W what is the challenge? I'm going to show you. So when you start chatting with your data using GPT models, you have to bring that relevant chunk of data to the prompt to start asking your question, right? But the challenge is sometimes that the small piece of info you're asking or chatting about is sort of hidden inside so many irrelevant texts in that chunk to finally find that piece that you're looking for to answer your question. This is a coin, but data is money, you know? Anyways, so what's gonna happen? A lot of irrelevant text coming into the chunk and to the prompt, token limit. Or think about it in another way. If I have several chunks that that information is existing in all of them, and I have to bring all of them to the prompt to answer that question, what's gonna happen? Token limit. Are you gonna clean this stuff? That was written in video script. I don't know. Don't look at me like that. You're so weird. But that's a fair point. Well, Langchain has already developed a solution for it, which is called contextual compression, that it will compress your chunks to hold just the relevant info based on your query from GPT models, and then bring that relevant part to the prompt to remove that challenge. Are you serious? Yeah. Okay, can you, can you show us please? Sure. Let's go. Hello, my friends. Hope you are doing well and welcome to another video. We previously recorded multiple videos and talked a lot about how you can chat with your own data using GPT models or how you connect your data to ChatGPT and start asking your questions about your data. So we talked about it, you should have your data converted to chunks and then calculate their word embeddings or have some retrieval there like cognitive search on Azure to bring that relevant chunk of data to the prompt and let GPT knows about that context and then answer your question. But the challenge is that sometimes if you bring that relevant chunk, it's still there are so many irrelevant data in that chunk and your piece of info you're asking question is just in a small portion or, or sort of embedded or hidden inside that chunk. So you bring a lot of irrelevant text there. Or sometimes the question that you're asking is available in multiple chunks and you cannot bring all the chunks to the prompt because of course these models have token limit and you have limited amount of text in a prompt to ship it to the GPT models. Now, there is a new implementation by Langchain called Contextual Compression that what it does, it will actually compress that relevant chunk that you have retrieved from your source of data in a way that it just holds the relevant data that you have asked your question from GPT models. So it will just bring that compressed part inside your chunk or chunks to the prompt so it will speed up your process reduce your cost and it will significantly reduce the risk of having token limit because you're bringing less but up to the point data to the prompt to answer your question and now you have more efficient chat with your data application then let's check it out before we start make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video thank you all right before we get to the topic of this video I assume that you're already familiar with how you can chat with your own data using GPT models or any large language model. Uh, if you don't so, please, please take a look of the video I recorded before, which is called how to chat with your own data. I will add it to the top right of the screen, also in the video description that I have fully explained there how you can connect these models to your own data to ask questions that answer is based on your data. Because if you go right now to ChatGPT and ask a question about your data set, it doesn't know anything because it is trained based on web data, right? So in chat with your own data scenario, what we usually do is we have sort of our data indexed or our data converted to word embeddings and let's say when we ask a question what is who i don't know what who stands for here but as an example that's a question that the answer of that is dependent on your data 
So if we go to our retriever here in that video that I mentioned that I recorded before, I use Azure Cognitive Search to retrieve the relevant chunk of data that is uh, uh, connected or relevant to this question to the large language model and then answer that question. Who is blah, 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 blah. So that means we are first chunking our data. We sort of index that and using something like retriever, let's say cognitive search, or maybe you use face index as an open source vector database or any vector database. You bring the relevant chunk of data to the prompt and then that prompt go through large language model to answer your question. But there is a challenge in this scenario, and this is actually the solution of the challenge we're going to talk about in this video. The challenge is that sometimes when you have your data set chunked and you retrieve them from your retriever, there you go, you have multiple chunks coming in, but there are so many irrelevant, there is a chance that there's irrelevant text available in these chunks too. Let's say one, two, three, four. I have selected four chunks from my retriever, which is uh, related to the question that has been asked by the user but it's still not necessarily all exact text of all these chunks has the info that they want so I'm bringing more text to the prompt uh, a slower process more expensive and the chance of having less accurate mo answer is even higher not only that even if you just bring one chunk inside the first chunk let's say you have the answer there but that chunk maybe is two or three paragraph of text data and not you don't need all of them to go to the prompt and answer the question so we still need to also diminish the size of that chunk to and then ship it to the prompt that's what compressor going to do and that's what has been developed which is called con contextual compression by langchain and we're going to talk about that how we quickly enable it by langchain i think that should be fairly new and stuff i i keep checking out Langchain implementations, they're adding more stuff coming in. So there might be some bugs, there might be some shortcomings, but this is the way to start. And I think that's certainly worth to give it a try if you have such a challenge in your chat with your own data applications. So let me go through the code. Again, whatever I, I execute as codes here, I will add the reference of this code. So the Discord channel, and the Discord channel link is in the video description. Click that out, you will go to the channel, and on the reference section, you will see the link of the code there. So, for running this code, I just need a Python environment. That's it. I'm using Azure ML to run my uh, Python code over a compute. You can use your own Jupyter Notebook VS Code running on your laptop. It doesn't matter really, or Google Colab. You just need a place that has Python installed to run this. And of course, you need to install some packages. And let me see what I installed under requirement.txt. This is my text file. You need to install OpenAI, Langchain, of course. You don't need Google search for this demo. I think I added from my previous codes. And a face. So my retriever here is face. You can use cognitive search on Azure or whatever, any vector database that you have. Give it a shot. But here, the example uses face. So let me go back to the code. I have installed these packages. Here is just a helper function for printing documents. It's not that important. If you want to use OpenAI or Azure OpenAI in Python code, you have to make sure that you have your OpenAPI key added as an operating system environment under this name. So I deleted that after running this code. Of course, that's credential. And then here, I'm using Langchain to load a data set. Yours can be different text, PDF, Word file, whatever. Here I use their demo, which is a state of the union text. If I open that, you can see that's that's the information that I have. And you see it's not chunked. So I'm going to chunk it and bring it to face, index it there. And then I can start chatting with that using contextual compression as well. So I simply use text loader from Langchain to load this. I'm going to make different chunks or split that document using the character text splitter. The chunk size max is 1,000. And after splitting that to multiple text, then I can have it inside face I mean I'm generating embeddings using large language model of open AI uh, to calculate a similarity when someone asks a question I can have the answer there for example I'm going to ask what did the president say about Kitanji Brown Jackson right that's a question so it, it will calculate the embeddings of this sentence then it will compare the word embedding similarity with the embeddings of the chunks I calculated and it is bringing the relevant chunks I, by relevancy, I'm irrelevant to this question to sort of answer my question. So this is my question, and it's sort of figured out based on face. 
here are document one two three four documents these although i just have one document right just a text but these are the chunks of that document the most closest chunks to this question but you can see not necessarily all these chunks are containing the information that i want they are the closest ones maybe just one of them or two of them is enough even let's say if document two is enough to answer the question i don't need all the lines i just need maybe a couple of them so why i should bring all these chunks for chunk of um text to the prompt to answer the question so let's see what contextual compression gonna do with llm chain extractor that's the vanilla compressor um compression developed by Langchain. So this is one type of compression here. So we're going to import that using Langchain Retriever here. And then from the document compressor, compressor, I am importing LLM chain extractor. So what I'm going to do, I say that my large language model is OpenAI. From LLM chain extractor, import my compressor. And of course, the compressor needs a large language model because it is using a large language model to compress your chunks. So that's why OpenAI has been added there. And then with contextual compression retriever, I'm saying that, hey, this is my compressor. Where is it? I'm using large language model as a compressor. And here's my retrieval. What is the retriever? That uh, face that I mentioned on the top. And now, instead of directly asking the question, I ask this question through that compression. And look at that. Now I don't have all the chunks coming in, just two of them. Even those document one and two is much more summarized or compressed compared to the initial one. Look at that, document one, document two. And it still can give me the answer. So instead of importing all of these to the prompt to answer the question, now I just add these almost four lines. That's it. There are more built-in compressors by Langchain. For example, there's another one called filter or LLM chain filter. The idea is the same, but the base compressor here is now filter, which we have implemented from here. Now, you see that right now, after implementing this, just one document has been added or answered instead of document one and two. Now you might question, MG, what's the difference between filter-based compressor versus this vanilla LLM chain extractor compressor? So this LLM chain filter is slightly simpler compared to the other one but it uses an LLM chain to decide which of the retrieved or initial retrieved documents and filter out which ones to, to return, right? It And it doesn't manipulate the document. That's why it brought up the, the initial document, document number one. It filtered out the document choices, but didn't manipulate it. it it's not summarized, right? So there's one more. There's another type of compressor called embeddings filter. The idea is again is the same, here's the only difference. Now the base compressor is different and you can see the answer is also slightly different. Now, what is the proposed value of embedding filters as a base compressor? Well, the previous one on the top, it make an extra LLM call, large language model call for each retrieved document. So you might pay more and it's slightly slow but what embeddings filter does it provides a cheaper and faster option by embedding the documents and query only uh, embedding the documents and even embedding your question and only returning the documents which have much more similar embeddings to the question that you have asked on the top and i think this is the last one yeah you can also bring together or stringing your compressor and also document transformers as well so what does that mean? Using this document compressor pipeline, you can sort of combine multiple compressors in sequence and even multiple transformers. Well, what does transformers do? Transformers doesn't do any compression. They just split the documents to small pieces uh, using text splitter. This is what we do actually. This is an, one type of, or um, another type of, transformer is redundant filter so what this one does is it can be used to filter out redundant documents based on the embedding similarity so it's not compressing but it is sort of dropping or transforming so you can have transformers and compressors together in like a pipeline to implement that over your query and get the results back and there you go for example you can see my documents sort of are more filtered more compressed and more transformed in a way that is much more efficient cheaper and short in size to ship it to the prompt and again answer the question what did the pregnancy say about Kitanji Jackson Brown all right so again I will add the source code of 
all this stuff that I executed before recording this call and I found that quite interesting and pretty helpful for your use cases if you're dealing with the challenge of the question you're asking from chat with your data is sort of uh, buried inside or hidden inside chunks and you have so many irrelevant chunks, chunk sizes are higher, give it a try. And I think it worth to have that tested in aspect of uh, your performance accuracy and speed, and of course, considering the cost. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section and, and, and your questions potentially. Thank you all. Have you ever had gut feeling that maybe you are meant for more? but you're not sure what is the best next step to achieve it? Me too. By achieving more, I mean not just more money or more stuff. That can be more joy, more balance, more love. So what's your more? What is your destination? By the way, did I call it gut feeling? Maybe that's the Holy Spirit. Dream big, my friends. Believe in yourself and take action. Till next video. Thank you.